So this morning we have out three mist nets and we're trying to capture and ban songbirds so we can learn a little bit more about them. Things that we can't see when they're in the tree, like if they're nesting or if they're in good condition, if there's any diseases out here. We, uh, we're not gonna harm the birds at all. They're just gonna wait in the nets for us until we go get them. We'll keep them for just a few minutes as we uh, put a band on their leg and then we'll release them to live the rest of their life as they would. Now these nets you call mist nets because they're so fine, you know, that, that you can't hardly see them. You spread them out, it almost looks like a badminton net yeah. to set up and these birds, when they're flying from place to place, they actually get entangled in this and they're not a hurt, but they just kind of like waiting for you to come get them. Right, yeah, it's totally passive. We don't bait them in or call them in. We just set it up where we would figure they'd naturally be flying and they just wait for us to come get them. You leave these set up for about a half an hour, then you check these because you don't want the birds to stress too much. Right, yeah, we don't want them to wait too long. So. And we just now put that one out, but you're ready to check this particular net. Sure, yeah, we'll see if we got anything. Let's go. Okay. We got one hiding here in the bottom. When we realize we've gotten a bird, the first thing we want to do is uh, make sure we know which way it flew into the net. It's not going to come out anyway, but the way it came in. So we try to maintain complete control over it as we're getting it out of the net so that we don't have any risk of injury. While the bird's waiting to be banded, we just put it in the cloth bag so that it's breathable. It's a nice calm environment for it to sit and wait until we're ready to process it. And what do we have here? So here we have a field sparrow. and. Um, the first thing we want to do when we get it out of the bag is put a band on it just in case it gets loose. We know at least that we caught it before. The band number is 2440-86480. First we look to see if it's um, in breeding condition, so we'll blow on its belly here. You can see this bird's got a complete absence of feathers on its mm -hmm. breast, so it's been sitting on a nest. And we have a rating scale. Um, as the brood patch develops, it gets more fluidy when it's sitting on the eggs. And then when it gets towards the end of the nesting season, the feathers start to grow back in. So you can kind of tell what part of the nest cycle the bird is probably in. And this bird looks like it's probably done breeding, so it's a four for brood patch. Birds will fatten up right before they migrate. They don't have much fat during the nesting season because they're so busy, busy feeding their young, so. And this bird just has a little bit of yellow, so it's got one, just a trace of fat. After they're done nesting, they start to molt their body feathers and their flight feathers before they migrate to have fresh plumage. No body molt. And then we just look at the wear of the flight feathers. This can help with aging and other things. Uh, these aren't very worn, it's just a two. And we want to measure the wing. This can sometimes help us tell what sex the bird is or if we're ever unsure what species it might be. We want to see if we can tell what age this is. We know it's an adult because it's in breeding condition, but when we look closer at the feathers, we might be able to tell if it's a younger adult or if it's an older adult. This bird actually is a second year bird. It just hatched last year and we can tell because these feathers here are all very brown and old looking. They're a lot lighter in color than these here. Mm -hmm. So this is a second year by molt limit. And we just gently place them in there so that they can't get anywhere while we weigh them. She weighs 13 and a half. Oop. All in a minute. Yep. How about that? Most of our bird programs are, are funded federally through federal grants, but um, in all honesty, if you buy a hunting fishing license, you're, uh, you're most likely to benefit birds through habitat management and land acquisition and, and other things. Don Pelly, Shaker Village. Hey, there's a lot more property than I thought there was here. Right, Tim, we have 3,000 acres. We are a National Historic Landmark here located in Mercer County, Kentucky in the inner bluegrass area. At what point did you start working with uh, Fish and Wildlife and, and projects related to, to what we're looking at right here? Uh, for the past several years, we've worked with Fish and Wildlife, but in the last two years, we've really become involved with some of the grant programs. Uh, we've undertaken a massive project, taking 1,000 acres of our land and turning it into a nature preserve 
establishing native warm season grasses and wildflowers on our property. People have always come for the shaker history, but now they can come for the natural history experience here also. This is obviously stuff that quail, uh, when they were here in great numbers, this is their kind of habitat. We planted, for example, this field uh, last year in the springtime. Uh, it's done exceptionally well. We had good rains last year. Uh, we've had an explosion of bob white, northern bob white quail and rabbits on the property. What we did with this particular wildlife habitat incentives program, we put in about 150 acres of native grass. With Shaker Village, they have such a diverse bird, songbird population. So what we did was we looked at the fields on a level um, a little more specific. This field we're going to dedicate to grassland songbirds because this is uh, where they are. This field we're going to dedicate maybe to bobwhite quail because they just have different needs. Bob white quail need more shrubby cover, but with the grass and songbird fields, we left them open, just just fields. Can you do it on a farm by farm basis? If this yes. farmer over here does it, this next thing you know, we got this patchwork yeah. and we do we do do that. Yes, uh, and hopefully by word of mouth, you know, each person that's happy with it tells their neighbor, tells their buddies, and we get a lot of calls from that. My friend planted native grasses, and it's making and a difference. Yeah. The quail are here in Rebel. Oh yeah.